minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Mark. 5, right here, EPI 4, is 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition. Status check, pressurization. Oh. Lift off. Lift off. And I'm very focused on the hour. In 1977, the capsule Voyager was sent into space. Inside were greetings in 54 languages, 117 different pictures of the planet Earth, a drawing of a man and a woman, sounds of whales, wind, rain, elephants, avalanches, birds, Fires, crickets, wild dogs, herding sheep, ships, trains, frogs, volcanoes, mothers, children, a kiss, and music. 27 pieces of the best music from all over the world. All kinds of music. Drummers from Senegal, pan pipes from Peru, Music by Stravinsky, Louis Armstrong, Chuck Barry, Blind Willie Johnson, Mozart, Beethoven, and three pieces by Johann Sebastian Bach. Voyager is still in space with the stars, but down here on Earth, a little girl practices the piano. Okay, I've done it. No, you haven't. I did so. I played it twice. Playing it twice isn't practicing. But everybody else is outside and having fun and... I don't care what everybody else is doing. But, Mum, it's a nice... You wanted to learn the piano. I know, but I... So no more arguments. <sighs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Not bad, not bad, but it's, uh, it's too... You have to be more smooth, Elizabeth, more relaxed. So, relax your shoulders and... Uh, Who are you? Uh, oh, I just love that piece. Are you a burglar? Such a pretty tune. A burglar, uh, a crook, you know, someone who breaks into your house and steals stuff. A jailbird. So? So you were. What? Not what, were. Where, where? In jail. Who told you? You were! So what? Worse could happen. <laughs> so, relax with the fingers and the shoulders. Why did they put you in jail? For not practicing. Now, try it again. Oh. Here, I show you. Now, you see? Hmm. Oh. oh, what a beautiful instrument. Just an old piano. Yeah, yeah, for you old, but for me, young and, and beautiful, just beautiful. <sighs> I never played on one of these before. Hey, you want to steal it? I never said I wanted to steal it. I just, I just said I never played on one of these before. What if I gave it to you? I don't want to own it. I just, I just like the sound it makes. You see, we didn't have pianos in my day. Really? Yeah, yeah, lots we didn't have in my day. No zippers, no noodle soup in a can, no TV, no bicycles, no, no dolls that say, Hi, my name is Debbie and I'm your friend. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I was thinking, I wrote a little piece once that, that might sound good on a piano. Uh, would you mind if I... Sure. All right, here goes.
It sounds like that? Wow, I changed my mind. You can't have it after all, Mr. Bach, Johann, Sebastian, Bach. You're kidding. <laughs> Why would I kid a nice little girl like you? Because the person who wrote my music book was called Johann Sebastian Bach. That's me. This is getting weird. <laughs> Excuse me, but do you have any more chairs? What? We need more chairs. Are you with Mr... Bach. Bach. Are you with Mr. Bach? We're early. We've come to set up. Don't mind them. They're from the choir. If they make a mess, my mom will kill me. Maybe she'll send you to jail. That's not very funny. He's not a comedian. He's a singer. Soprano! And I got sent to jail because I worked for the wrong duke. He, he wasn't very nice. As a matter of fact, he was mean. And things were, were even worse for the orchestra. What orchestra? This orchestra? No, no, no. This orchestra is mine. The Duke's orchestra's job was to accompany the choir in the Sunday cantatas, and my job was to write the cantatas and rehearse the singers. But so the, the musicians' gallery was terribly crowded and, and freezing cold. Yeah, it wasn't a fun place, the castle. But I wrote some pretty good stuff there. Yeah, uh, maybe you know this one. For singers! For instruments! Strings! Flutes and oboes! Organ. Who said organ? I did. Oh, oh, the organ. The wonderful organ. Do you know, the organ has three keyboards for the hands and another one for the feet. There are all those pipes, metal ones and wooden ones. Each group of them can make a different sound when you pull the proper stop. Like, like flutes. Drum horns, trumpets, and even a bird. And bells. I love the organ. Such a sound. And, and beautiful. Oh, so, so beautiful the organs were. And still are, I'm sure. The silvery pipes with the light coming in on them from the stained glass windows. And such a sound they made. What incredible music could come out. It was, it was like playing a small city of, of pipes or a, a, what do you call them, skyscrapers. It was like playing music on a skyscraper. <laughs>
wrote that? It's beautiful. Someone's at the door. Nice place. Do you have any chips? Yeah, chips. Later you'll get chips. Uh, d this is Elizabeth. Hi. What about apple juice and marshmallows? Yeah, marshmallows. You still haven't told me why the Duke sent you to jail. He was in jail? So what? Worse could happen. Were you in a dungeon? What for? The Duke sent him. So? Well, things kept getting worse and worse at the castle. And, and, and the Duke started fighting with his nephew and they wouldn't let anybody visit him or talk to him. Which I thought was an awful thing to do to anybody. So I went to the Duke and I said, Duke, if you won't be nicer to your nephew, I'm going to quit. And the Duke said, not only am I not going to let you quit, but I'm going to put you in the castle jail. Which is what he did, and that's how it happened. Weren't you lonely? Yeah, yeah, I missed my wife and children. We had three children then. A girl, Katrina Dorothea, she was about your age. How old are you? Eight. Oh, you big for your age. I thought you were nine. She, she was nine. And the two boys, Wilhelm Friedemann, who was seven, and Carl Philipp Emanuel, who was only three. I missed them all terribly. So I wrote music for them. All kinds of music. but not for the piano. Imagine putting a man like you in jail. Did you escape? How did you get out? After a month, they opened the door and I walked out. <laughs> they had to let me go because Prince Leopold offered me the job of Kapellmeister at his court. Because a prince is more important than a duke and whatever he says goes. Our dog's called Prince. He's a Cocker Spaniel. Well, this prince was a real prince and a, and a marvelous prince too. My whole family could live with me at the castle. Anyhow, the children played tag and hide and seek in the walled gardens and the orchards, and they walked through the halls talking to the echoes of their voices. <laughs> oh, it's a wonderful place for kids, a castle. Yeah, yeah, I wrote six of them. I need the highest salary of anyone in court. You don't say. Are you very rich? <laughs> How rich can you be with six kids to support? Three. By then, I had six already. But I was famous. I was writing stuff. People were humming it. It was terrific. I was the best. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me. I don't know what came over me. It's... It's not good to show off. I was always telling my kids that too. Never show off. Better to be modest and know you're the best than to blabber to the world. Let them tell you you don't tell them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think so. Good. Besides, the prince was a musician too. He wasn't bad. We used to practice together, the prince and I. Sometimes we played all through the night. We'd sit there at the harpsichord with a couple of beers. It was fun. And I had all kinds of freedom. I could visit with other musicians and composers. Well, of course. Why not? Why not? <laughs> you have no idea how bossy people could be in those days. When I was in Arnstadt as an organist, I got into trouble all the time. I was supposed to train the boy singers in the choir, and half the time they wouldn't listen to me, and they'd, they'd run around the room and they'd make little balls with paper and spit them at each other and <laughs> giggle in corners. Oh, they were terrible. <laughs> Not like you, my choir. 
These I can't pick. Oh, maybe if I picked with my foot, I wouldn't have got Gordon here. <laughs> just a joke, just a joke. Mozart, they said, was more fun, but he wasn't such a father as I was. I had responsibilities. Uh, boring Bach. What kind of trouble were you in? Oh, all kinds. I, I had to beg them to let me go to Lübeck to study with Buxtehude. One of the greatest organists that ever lived. And there I got into real trouble. I was terribly late. How late were you? Well, let's see. I was 260 miles walking there and 260 miles walking back. And I stopped from time to time and sat in a field, looked at a sunset, went to a church, inspected an organ. I guess about... Four months? Jeez. Yeah, but look what I learned. Not that they appreciated it in Arnstadt. What did they know about music? Nothing. Oh, Elizabeth, here, here's the rest of my choir. Mr. Bach, why are you here? I mean, I love having you and all, but... I heard you practicing with that music of mine, and I said to myself, this girl needs a little boost. That's very nice of you. And the choir? <laughs> They're here to sing, silly. And the prince? What prince? You were talking about a prince. The wonderful guy. Oh, yeah, 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 Prince Leopold. We were very close friends. I used to go with him to Carlsbad and we took the water there. I preferred beer, but uh, that's the way it was at Carlsbad. Everybody said it was so good for you. If it was so good, how come now we're all dead? Answer that one. Your yeah, other musicians came also, and, and the prince brought his own harpsichord from the castle. To tell you the truth, I don't know why he liked the spa so much. A lot of fat people lying around in the mud. Ah, oh, without my music, I would have gone crazy. Sometimes you remember sad things. Uh, the last time I was in Carlsbad, playing music, uh, eating too much, uh, and back at the castle, my wife was dying. God, there was no telephone for them to tell me she was sick. There was, there was no airplane so I could fly to her. Oh. Maria Barbara, 35 years old. Beautiful. The mother of my children, dead. That's too long to remember those things. That's awful. Yeah, yeah, awful. Yeah, the children, Johann Gottfried Bernhard was only five. And now... It wasn't your fault. Yeah, I, I tried to make it up to them. I, I spent a lot of time with them. I, I gave them music lessons. Didn't you play with them? Of course, of course. I played the harpsichord and, and they played... No, I mean games. Didn't you play games with them? Yeah, like baseball, hockey, Monopoly. What about tag? Didn't you have fun with them? But Elizabeth, for us, music was fun. We played games with music. I wrote the clavier book line, uh, how do you say, the little book for the keyboard for my oldest boy, Wilhelm Friedemann. Naturally, all the children used it. In the beginning, the pieces were very easy, and then they were not so easy, and then a little harder, but always they were fun to play. Like chords? Chords? Oh, you mean like skipping ropes? No, like musical chords. And I love chords. I wrote this for my two older boys. You see? 
see, I can open them up and spread them out. And now back to going to courts again. It's a game, you see, we played games. The thing about music is that you must love to play it. Make it a game. Why can't I play it like you? You have five fingers on each hand, don't you? Yes. How many fingers have I got? Ten. Right, like you. So practice, that's all you have to do. Practice. Practice. Practice, practice. Boys. And what did you write for your girls? Girls? Who needs them? Will you see Elizabeth? I'm sorry, but uh, in those days, girls were different. Girls were supposed to grow up to be mothers. It was very nice if they could play an instrument or if they could sing. If they played, they played for the family. If they sang, they sang for the children. They, they didn't have the vote, they didn't wear pants, and that's the way it was. But why? But that's just, just the way it was. Now, my boys, they were terrific. Carl Philipp Emanuel, Johann Christoph Friedrich, Wilhelm Friedemann, and Johann Christian, my youngest. He even played with Mozart. All of them were composers. My father was a musician, too. He taught us the violin. There were seven of us children. I remember we sat in the kitchen and played music and sang. Ah, oh, I had a very good voice. I used to sing in the school choir. Well, he was good as us. Of course he was. Why, of course he was. Because this is Mr. Bach. Yeah, that Mr. Bach. Who's she? Anna Magdalena. Now, she was a singer. I met her when she was 20. We were all so happy. Ah, if only we could have stayed with the prince. So why didn't you? Because I didn't like his new wife. I liked his first wife, but she died. And his new wife had no idea about music. No feelings for music at all. How can you marry a woman who doesn't like music? Unbelievable. I loved writing music for the church. That was the most important thing for me. Music for the church. Music for the glory of God. In Leipzig, I wrote a new cantata every week. Every week a new cantata. Anna Magdalena, she was fantastic. She copied out every single part of all the cantatas. You know, every musician and every singer has to have his own copy. Well, I couldn't have done it without her. Somebody worked out that it would take anyone else 60 years to copy out all the music that I wrote. And 
the concerts we made, all the excitement, the, the children running around, getting all the candles ready. You were putting the music pages on the music stands. Oh, that was a job. Uh, 20 sets of music pages for the musicians and, and, and 40 sets for the singers. Oh, poor Anna Magdalena was always copying out some last minute music and, and shouting at the children to get dressed. Uh, shoes, choir gowns, rosin for the bows, reeds for the woodwinds, wigs. Uh, oh, you know we had to wear wigs. Didn't they itch? Oh, yeah. Itch. And stank and uh, hot. Powder all over your clothes. Ah, they were a great big nuisance, those stupid wigs. And, and, and always getting lost. <laughs> but, oh, I miss the concerts. I'm sorry. I'm Got any food? Got any food? Coke? Coke! What do we get? What do we get? Pizza? Pizza! French fries? French fries! Ice cream! Ice cream! Get apple cooking mit Schlager, your, your, your apple pie and whipped cream, and come straight back. Oh, what a business. Kids. Mind you, it's good to be with kids. Uh, I had 20, you know. 20? Yeah, yeah, that's why I have my boys here. I'm, I'm used to it. Keeps me young, yeah? <laughs> Ah, oh, these boys are very, very good, you know. Uh, when I was a child, I went to a special school for boys with good voices, and and they had to be poor, too. Well, we were very poor. And, and even when my voice broke, they let me stay, because I could play the violin and the harpsichord. So you see, boys, you better get good at something else, because you won't be singing forever. Thank goodness. I'd rather play hockey. Oh, it was terrific, that school. And what a music library. And, and the people I met, composers, musicians. Mind you, uh, none of them could teach like my big brother, Johann Christoph. My father taught me the violin, but she died when I was ten. And my mother had died only the year before. Oh, I cried and cried. And my brother Christoph took me onto his lap and, and dried my eyes and he told me that he would teach me how to play the organ. So I started to learn almost everything there was to know about music. Counterpoint, harmony, how to play the harpsichord, clavichord, organ, viola, cello, gamba. Even the lute. I was the perfect one man band. My brother Christoph used to lock his music up in the cupboard because he thought I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> of course I was ready. So, in the middle of the night, when everyone was sound asleep, I sneaked out of my bed, stuck my hand through the slats of the cupboard door, and pulled out the music. There was Sitting at the table, the moon shining through the window. Of course, I wasn't allowed a candle. Copying the music page by page, note by note. And uh, then my brother found out. What did he do? Was he mad? He wasn't allowed to watch TV for a week. <laughs> <laughs> he was furious. He, he, he took it all away from me. That was a mean thing to do. Yeah, yeah, but otherwise he was very nice to me. The, the Bachs were all very nice people. There sure were a lot of musicians in your family. Yeah, we've always been musicians, ever since I can remember. My father, my, my grandfather, my brothers, my cousins, my sons, my daughter, she sang beautifully, and, uh, of course, myself. <laughs> 
I don't want to show off. I already told you that, but uh, what's true is true. We were such a famous musical family that the word Bach came to mean musician. Got the straws. We used to have musical picnics when I was a little boy. And when I grew up, we brought our own children to family day. There were about a hundred and fifty of us. Aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmothers, grandfathers, great-grandmothers. Yeah, we had enormous picnics in the countryside. In the woods, near a stream, in a valley, sometimes on top of a hill with the sheep. <laughs> And the Magdalena would be cooking for days. That's enough food, I would tell her. This is for music. Everybody would sing and play the recorders, violins, flutes. We took as many of the instruments as we could carry. What a lot of noise we must have made. Sort of like um, a Merry Christmas. No, not like a Merry Christmas. Like a lot of barks on the hill making music. But Anna Magdalena loved it. She, she loved being outdoors, away from the housework. She loved the birds, the flowers, the countryside. Ah, I should have spent the time with her. You didn't have the time. You had your hands full. With the choir. The school. The organ. The family. The composing. Don't forget the composing. Yeah, yeah, it takes time, yeah. What a pity we have only one life, isn't it? That's what my mom says. She says, I've only got one life and one pair of hands. Very true, very true. <laughs> if we had four hands instead of two, think of the music I could have written. What about duets? Then you have four hands. Yeah, but think how it would sound with eight hands. Uh, listen to this. Uh, may I? What's your favorite nursery rhyme? Nursery rhymes are for babies. I'm too old for nursery rhymes. Nonsense. What's your favorite? Baba Black Sheep, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That's the same tune. Elizabeth? Goes the weasel. <laughs> now let's try to make a fugue of it. Ready for our eight hands? Chris, you're taking over the umpas. Mark, bring in Pop Goes the Weasel. Tyler, turn the weasel upside down. In Dulce Jubilo. Excellent. Matthew, my Jake. Now, Elizabeth? 
Me. It would be an honor. Orchestra! Elegance, Elizabeth. Elegance. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Marvelous. <sighs> Will I tell them that I dance with Mr. Bach? Oh. <laughs> but they never believed me, would they? I don't think so. <sighs> At home, you know, we used to make wonderful concerts. Musicians were always dropping in. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, a, a young harpsichordist, came by one day. He had a problem. His boss didn't sleep very well, and he wanted me to write some nice music for him. So I wrote a whole bunch of variations. The Goldberg Variations is what they are called, because Mr. Goldberg would be playing them for his boss all night long. When I can't sleep, I read. Me too. I shine my flashlight under the blankets. I sneak downstairs and spy on my grown-ups. They say that I wrote some music to put the count, uh, Mr. Goldberg's boss was a count, to put the count to sleep. Now, that's nonsense. I wrote it for all those hours that they had to stay awake. Mr. Buck, you're a genius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's a fugue for you. Can you name me the first four notes? B flat? Shh, I want Elizabeth to do it. Oh, um, well, there's a B flat, then an A, then a C, then a B natural. B, A, C, B. Right, Elizabeth, but in German it's a little bit different. B flat is just called B, and B natural is called H. So? I know. I mean Bach. That's right. My name in music. And I just managed to introduce my name, Bach. Manners. Be quiet. Shh. Well, I couldn't finish it. Why? Everyone has to die, Elizabeth. You're the greatest of them all. Oh, thank you. But not everybody thought so at the time. Not everybody was as clever as you. <laughs> they didn't like my St. Matthew passion. Do you know what they said? They said I was wasting my time. Imagine it, wasting my time. Well, they didn't deserve to hear it. I didn't write it for them. I wrote it for God. All my music I wrote for God. My St. Matthew was not performed for a hundred years. A hundred years? Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, who can understand these things? For 50 years after my death, my music wasn't popular. It, it was forgotten. Sure, Mozart liked it, but he was a genius. No one else ever listened to my music. C 
Can you imagine how terrible that was for me? I must never let that happen again, never. Now, can you guess why I am here with my boys? To play your music for me. Yeah, yeah, for you. For you to love my music. For someone from every generation to love my music. I want to make sure that my music is never again forgotten. So what I do is visit children. Children all over the world. As long as somebody is playing or listening to my music, my music is alive. And, and every single time that my music is being played by, by Elizabeth here on the piano or, or in a grand concert hall or in a beautiful old church, or even on a tape recorder, or uh, how do you call it? Compact disc. Yeah, yeah, compact disc. Every single time my music is heard, I am there too. But I've been rambling on and on, and now soon it's your dinner time. You didn't practice very much, did you? What do you mean? Look what I learned. Yeah, yeah, but you must practice. I had to work very hard. Whoever works so hard will do just as well, believe me. But I'm just an ordinary person, and you're... Yes, a... There's nothing special about playing the piano. All you have to do is hit the right key at the right time. Don't be silly. It's impossible for now me... Now listen to me. Everything is possible if you want it enough. Sure, it might not be possible for you to be an as a Bach, but why should you be? Just as there's only one Bach, there's only one Elizabeth. And that Elizabeth can be the very best Elizabeth that she can be. And, and while you practice and play, you also listen. And while you listen, you begin to understand. And the more you understand, the more you know. And the more you know, the more you appreciate. And the more you appreciate, the more you love. Because you see, Elizabeth, it's just as important to listen to and to, to love music as it is to play it. And if you truly love music, whatever happens between you and music will happen for the best. Well, it's time. Boys. No, don't go. One more thing, Mr. Bach, please. Yeah? Out of all your music, which is your favorite favorite? Favorite? Uh, favorite what? Piece of music. What do you think? What do you think is the very best? <laughs> Oh, there's no best in a life that went on for 65 years. But, okay, because they are here, and because they've been making pests of themselves, and because, well, it has some pretty good tunes in it, and because they're dying to sing it, here's something from one of my cantatas. 